Hi, I'm Scott Ferguson with Light Reading. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2018, and we're talking to Kevin Hutchins. He is the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Product Marketing at Juniper. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question, um, what are some of the challenges operators will face uh, with future 5G services? Yeah, so um, 5G is really uh, being driven by the increasing demand for more bandwidth um, out of the mobile network. Um, but with along with that increasing demand for bandwidth, it's going to drive a significant amount of additional investment in the network um, to upgrade the radios, aggregating bandwidth, and eventually in order to deliver that bandwidth by uh, densifying uh, the cells that the, uh, um, in the radio network. Along with that, they're going to have to go and upgrade um, the transport network that's going to be carrying all that additional traffic. Well, all of that investment um, is going to be significant dollars. Mobile ARPU is just not really increasing um, that quickly. Um, and so, you know, the, the uh, service providers and the, the carriers are going to be looking for ways to build a more flexible network that enables them to deliver that bandwidth, but also allows them to monetize it for multiple applications and use cases, including the mobile use case, but also uh, new streams of revenue such as IoT and ultra low latency type applications, as well as um, potentially leveraging existing services onto the same network for enterprise applications and residential. And um, speaking of the operators, uh, what challenges uh, will these operators uh, face um, besides just upgrading their radios? Yes, yeah, so um, the, in our view, the, the 5G upgrade is not just about the radio. It's, it's really going to be more about how do I deliver um, a more robust overall network that I can operate at a much lower cost um, and at the same time provide the flexibility that um, I can uh, run multiple different types of services over the same converged network. Um, and so, you know, a big part of that's going to be about, you know, having a flexible IP-based network all the way from access back to the core. Um, because, you know, without IP, if, it, if everything's proprietary, it's difficult to converge networks together. So having all IP allows you to run multiple types of network services on one common network. The, the second is, is that they're going to have to think more about leveraging the value of virtualization. Um, so, you know, being able to um, uh, move services out closer to uh, where the users are through virtualization um, in uh, architectures such as a control user plane separation or a cup space architecture, take advantage of node virtualization and network slicing, um, and then the ability to really provide um, the uh, all these different services on one common network um, using uh, scale-out functionality so that you know, they can uh, provide uh, resiliency as well as uh, service agility is going to be um, important as well. Um, if you go with um, a virtualized network running on all IP, then the other two things that they have to think about are going to be about how do they get visibility so that they can provide service assurance. Um, because you know, traditional networks have 5.9 uh, reliability. In order to maintain that sort of SLA um, in the 5G world, you need to provide enhanced visibility into the operation of the network, both at the virtual layer as well as the physical layer. Um, and you also need to be, be able to provide enhanced automation capabilities so that you can run that network in a, in a more machine-oriented way because, again, it's difficult for operators to be able to respond uh, to the changes in the network as quickly as would need it to be if, if everything was done manually. And then lastly, they really need to be thinking about pervasive security. Um, you know, it, in the world that we're in today, um, it's, it's not tenable to have um, a network that is operating out into the open. And so things like transport security, as well as over the top security um, uh, at uh, where services are deployed from, is going to be an increasingly uh, part of the, the overall solution for 5G. So it's, it's really not just about the radio anymore. And as 5G rolls out over the next few years, what role will Juniper play in that? 
Yeah, so you know, when when the 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 solution has become much more about you know uh, building out a high performance network as well as providing um, embedded and, and pervasive security, Juniper is best in breed in providing those capabilities. So we've been investing um, significantly in in how do we provide a full end to end uh, solution for uh, building IP networks. How do we provide a full end-to-end -end solution for providing robust and reliable uh, carrier-grade virtualization um, that you can operate uh, across the entire network for all the different applications uh, in the 5G and IoT mobile solution stack? Um, how do we provide uh, uh, automation leveraging Contrail, which is the number one uh, software-defined networking uh, controller for uh, telco cloud and for the mobile cloud? And then how do we also make sure that we are delivering a very robust um, security solution based on uh, our uh, SRX platform, both in a physical and a virtual form factor? Kevin, thank you very much. Thanks, Scott.